In this section, I'm going to introduce you with some of the most commonly used WAN technology called VPN kind of implementations. So the first thing we'll see the concept of VPNs and then later on we'll see the different reasons why and how the VPNs were introduced and how they are much better, better technology than when you compare with the lease line connections. And then finally, we'll also discuss some of the different kinds of VPN models. And in that our, in, our, in this course, we'll be majorly focusing on the MPLS technology, MPLS VPNs. And then finally, before we finish off, I'm going to list some of the benefits and the drawbacks of the different kinds of VPN implementations. So let's get started with the first thing, traditional router based networks. Now, when you talk about WAN connections, like if you go back to early 80s, somewhere around, if you, if you have a site A of a customer A want to communicate, want to connect with a site B, site C and site D, we need to have a separate cable or a separate least and connection given by the service portal. Now, this is more a traditional router based networks, which is going to connect the customer sites via a dedicated point-to-point -point lease LAN connection. So it's a separate point-to-point -point dedicated connection given by the service board. Now, it's a very good connection, but at the same time, there are some advantages and disadvantages with the lease LAN connections. Now, when it comes to advantages, it's, it's really very secure. It provides some high, high span with, with some good quality and reliability. But at the same time, the lease lines are very expensive lines. So if you want to have a lease LAN connection connecting from a router A to router B, router C, router D, we need to have a three separate lease line connections. And then again, if you want to have a connection between uh, B to C and C to D, again, you need to have a separate lease line connection. So the more number of sites you want to connect, you need to go with more number of separate dedicated WAN connections. And it's a permanent connection. At the same time, it is not scalable. So not scalable means, let's say I'm going to connect three different branch offices. In future, I'm going to add two more branch offices. And I want these two different branch offices to communicate with my head office. Again, we need to have a separate, a separate dedicated connection. So like that, as the size of the organization increases, the more and more branch offices added, we need to go with more and more WAN connections that is dedicated lease LAN connections. And it's really very difficult for the service provider to provide a dedicated line, a separate dedicated line for each and every site. So it's really not scalable solution. Now, Later on, in around 90s, they, they introduced a concept of VPN. Now, when I say VPN, don't don't get wrong with something called uh, internet VPNs or IPsec VPNs. There is also one kind of VPN technology, but we are talking about the overall VPN technology like frame delay, X.25, ATM. These are all different kinds of VPN implementations. GRE, DM VPN, IPsec, MPLS, and N2TP V3. These are all different kinds of VPN implementations, but they vary the way they implement, okay? So what we are going to see is in case of VPN, if you want to connect your customer site here, so I got a customer site here, and I want to provide a connection with another customer sites here on the right side. And to provide connection, we, we are going to connect to the service product. Let's say I have a customer, customer sites, and to provide the connectivity between these two different branch offices, I'm going to use the existing service forwarder network. And then I'm going to allow my customer to connect to the nearest router here, nearest router or frameless switch. It depends upon the what kind of technology we are using. And then I'm going to connect my my site with the nearest router. And then and then the service forwarder is uh, is receiving the traffic from the customer side, and he's allowing you to send his traffic, the customer traffic over his service forwarder network, allowing through the service forwarder network. This kind of implementations, we call them as VPN implementations, virtual private network, even though we, we are actually connecting between over the service border, but it is going to provide a virtual point to point connection. So virtually it is a point to point, but there is no permanent dedicated line connecting between the two different sites. So that's the reason we call them as VPNs, virtual private network, which is going to replace the complete point to point links, the least line connections with an emulated point to point links. Emulated means that virtually there is a point to point connection between these two sites. Okay, but physically there is no separate line connecting. Physically they are going with through the service border devices and the service border is allowing you to send your traffic over his private network. Now customers use VPNs primarily to reduce the operational cost. So the main reason of 
of using the VPNs is the cost effective solution. So it, it has been a very good cost effective solution when you compare with the least LAN connections. At the same time, it is very much scalable when you compare with the least LAN. So we'll see the advantages and disadvantages much more in detail in my next slide. So when I talk about VPNs, now X.25 no more used, frame delay, you know, you know frame delay, that is also one kind of VPN implementation. ATM is also not much in use. And we have something called GRE, DMVPN, IPsec, MPLS, L2TP, V3. These are all the different examples of VPN implementation. But when it comes to the way they work, the way they are configured is going to be totally different when you compare with any each other technologies. Okay, so we are not going to walk through with all these things. So our main focus will be understanding the MPLS technologies in this video series. Okay, so let us see the advantages. What are the advantages we get with VPN implementations? The first thing you can see, it is a cost saving solution. Now replacing the expensive lease line connections, it's, it's really very, very good cost effective solution. Okay. So we are going to re replace all your expensive lease line connections with a less expensive uh, connection to a service provider through some DSL fiber, which are, which are most commonly used to provide connectivity the different kinds of VPN implementations we can say. And it's it's really scalable, scalability because adding a new branch office is very fast and simple by just adding an additional link to the service portal. Now, how, how it is simple, let me show you how it is simple here. Now, if you want to add any new, any new branch office, let's say I want to add two new branch offices somewhere here. And to add a new branch office, what I need to do, I just need to connect my router, the customer router to the nearest nearest service portal router, nearest service portal router. Now already there is a connection between uh, between through the service portal. So which means if these two branch offices want to communicate with each other, or maybe it's a new customer want to communicate with each other. Now he will simply send your traffic here. And from there it goes to the other side and it, it's really go through the service portal network. You don't need to have a separate a point to point dedicated connection. So adding a new branch office for the service portal is going to be very easy just connecting the customer routes to the nearest service portal devices. So it's going to be very easy and it's really scalable solution. The reason is the more number of customers you add or more number of sites you add, it's, it's really not going to add much overhead on the service portal. Or, but it's really because in case of lease line connections, if you just talk about then you need to have a separate dedicated connection from each and every site. But here it's not required. So that's one of the advantage we get here, scalable. At the same time, it provides some improved security by using some different encryption protocols and authentication methods. Like you have one kind of implementation called uh, IPsec VPNs. What I can do is I can provide a WAN connection over the existing internet. So they, they use some very strong encryption protocols and some strong authentication methods, which going to ensure that it's as secure as your lease lines and it's going to provide a very good performance the more more equivalent performance to lease line connections and also it's very much flexible to connect because now most of the vpn connections you can have over fiber and dsl and also it is available on other broadband options and also they are reliable so when you compare with the lease lines VPNs are going to provide a very good advantages in today's network. So most of the lease lines in today's networks are replaced with the different kinds of VPN implementations. Now the next thing, we'll try to understand the terminology of the VPNs. Now in VPNs, we have a terminology here. Now normally the service provider network we call as P network, provider network, the service provider infrastructure, which is providing you with the VPN services. And then you have a customer network, which is the complete service for customer network, the part of the network, which is under the customer control. And then we have a customer site, which is a part of the customer network. Again, now you can have any number of sites. You may have, you may be, you may have multiple sites like that. And then we have something called P devices. Now, typically we call these middle routers as P devices, provider devices, and they don't uh, have any connection to any of the customer. They are mostly the middle devices and you have something called provider edge devices. Now these devices, we call them as provider edge. Why? Because these provider edge devices are the devices which are connecting to the customer 
and depends it can be connecting to a single customer or multiple customers and then you have something called customer edge devices c devices the devices which are going to connect to the provider edge the p to c that's what we call as a provider edge and customer edge and then finally you have a link the link which is connecting between the pe router and the c c router that's what p to c we call it as p to c link <laughs>